thank you guys for coming. This class is going to uh, be about a print cut uh, files. <clears throat> so um, it's going to be basically we create the print cut files ready to go for you. We had a bleed to the artwork and we assigned a cut line to it already. So this particular class is basically just taking downloading that file and working with it in Illustrator. Um, so there are some uh, uh, there are very specific things that you have to do in Illustrator in order to get this file to um, open up in your well Roland Versa Works or whatever RIP software you have that you're going to run this print cutter on. Uh, so uh, knowing that, here we are at the website, and just to give you a quick run through about who we are and what we do and what makes us different than anybody else uh, that are in the art business of our industry is this. Uh, this is my home page. I'm logged in and you can see I'm logged in because I have downloads available to me this month. Um, if you are not a subscriber, it would just say zeros right there. So if you are a, a, a subscriber to our art uh, program here, you would have uh, it gives you a countdown of what's available to you. But what I wanted to show you is the main thing on my website here is this giant search box. So if you just search for a file um, in that box, you can look for anything you want, any kind of categories. You know, if you're looking for soccer designs or football designs, just go in that search box and click on it. Um, these are the images here. This first row, uh, this, these images change every single week. So every Tuesday, we put up new artwork uh, in here. And if you scroll down just a little bit more, we also put up new embroidery files. So every image that we add to our website is digitized for embroidery uh, in uh, three different file formats. So if I'm just going to click on this to show you here something for a second here. And my internet in my office is running extremely slow today. So uh, you know, we have some lag times. So when you click on an image, you will have these seven different production files that will be available to you. And um, if you take a look at it, this is, this is digital printing file. This is a high-res PNG file. And this is designed for any um, directed garment, die sublimation, large format banners, you know, print on a roll and that sort of thing. You would uh, download this particular file to use it. If you click on this next button here, this is our print cut file. So I wanted to show you that because our print cut files, this is what it looks like when you print it. So if you notice out here, what we've done is we create and pull the pixels out of the edge of the artwork and go all the way out. This is probably a little bit, a bit less than a half of an inch. And the reason we do it that size is because if you wanted to shrink this image down, let's say for a sticker or a, you know left chest or a hat or something small like a two, three inch um, uh, print, this, is, this bleed will be big enough for you to use. And the reason we put a bleed on the artwork is this. I get a lot of comments basically a complaints about uh, people that use a print cutter and they say that everything I print since they add a cut contour line on it most people will sit, will come to the outside of the artwork to add that cut line and when you do that then everything looks like a sticker because there's this you know eighth of an inch quarter of an inch depending on the size of your artwork there's a there's an even out uh, outline, white outline around the outside edge, and it looks like a sticker. So I've been hearing that for years. So when we decided to add production files for the print cut to our line, we said, you know what, that's the biggest complaint we hear, let's get rid of it or give them an option around it, right? So um, we add a bleed, we pull the pixels out from the artworks, and once that thing is cut, um, there is no outline around it. It's just, it. We you, you print it, it comes back and it'll cut, and then all this excess bleed will weed off, and there's no white outlines, and there's no white slivers. Because um, some people will say, well, why don't you just, you know, just print the image and then put the cut line right on top of the edge. Well, we could, um, and you could, but the problem is you will have some slivers of that material showing through. Uh, even if it's really, really tight, uh, tightly, um, um, set up and, and you know uh, calibrated on your printer. It will the, the the nature of the printer and the way the rolls move back and forth and that sort of thing when it prints and then goes back it rolls all the way back comes out and it's moving around as it cuts it. That will eventually make some pieces here and there walk off. So we we make sure that we take care of that for you. So I just wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna turn this down. This right here is a screen printing color. That means this is separated in full color. Uh, using simulated process color separation technique, uh, and it's a, what we see. You see here the file format that you download would be an EPS file. Well, that EPS file is a fancy EPS file. Basically, it's a desktop color separation file, so it has your alpha channels if you're a screen printer built inside of it. 
So when you place that in the Illustrator or you import that into Corel Draw, all your separations are ready to go. It also comes with a printing spec sheet that says if you print these colors in this print order, use these mesh counts, line screens, and screen angles, you're going to get a quality print. Uh, if you have an Oki Data uh, laser printer or an inkjet printer and you want to print to you know, the uh, laser toner papers, um, you would use this file. This is a screen printing black line. What that is, that is our version of our vector art file. So all the other artwork, uh, my competitors and the other people in the art industry that have uh, clip art, that's our version. So we have clip art is one piece of our puzzle. Um, then here is a vinyl cut detailed file. So if you're going to cut this, this guy out of vinyl, um, this thing has been optimized at full size, uh, say like a full size shirt. And we also give you a three inch version, which means if you shrink this for a left chest or a hat or something at three inches, we can't just take this one and shrink it because these line weights and, and all these little cavities and stuff would not work uh, properly. So we optimize and take take care of that for you. So we give you um, seven different production files. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how this works. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in fire football because that's the image we're going to work with. So I'm just going to search it. Again, for some reason today's my site's slow as molasses. Uh, not sure why, but this should pop up here in a second. Don't know if that's an internet thing or or a website thing, but I'm pretty sure it's is the internet in my location because I've been fooling with it all day and it's really, really slow. All right, so this is the image I want to use. It's been the one I'm, I've been using for um, all these webinars. And the reason I use the same design is because I want to show people that we have production files ready for all different kinds of decorating, right? So here's the file that we would look for. And um, if I click on the print cutting one, I'm going to get my, you can see the image with my bleed there and I can go ahead and download it. So let's do that. When I download it, if you're a subscriber, you have access to the download links. Uh, if not, then you, you wouldn't be able to do it. But it's going to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're going to charge you for one download. I'm going to hit download. And the thing about that one download, by the way, is it is a um, it counts as one download or one, one, one number against your 200. So the way our su subscriptions work um, is we have a stock art subscription, we have an embroidery art subscription, and we have a stock and embroidery art. So basically the stock art subscription for $18.99 a month, which is like what you would pay for two people for lunch one day, right, somewhere at a fast food place, um, that would get you all the artwork that you need for an entire month. Uh, and remember, we're always adding new artwork up there. So um, the embroidery art is $14.99 a month, and if you do stock and embroidery, that would be uh, $31.99 a month. So that's the, the way that goes. You know what? Um, we just downloaded that file, and I'm going to download another one because I'm going to go. I want to download. Uh, let's see. We we'll do a football bear, and let's take a look and see. We're going. I'm going to show you two different things in this class today. I will show you a little bit in. Um, well, a lot of this is done in. All of it really, technically is done in Illustrator um, for the print cut version. But I'm going to show you how you can change colors, right? Because these are not vector files. So let's be clear about that. I have raster files and vector files, but the print cut files are raster images with a print with a vector cut line that we assign to it. So I'm going to take this guy here. I'm going to download him right now. This could charge me one more download. We're going to hit a, and uh, hit the download button. Here it is. It's going to save it to my downloads. I'm going to hit save now. Right here, we get a lot of questions with our customers that say, "Hey, I downloaded your file. I don't know where in the world it went." Well. That's up to you, right? So if you most uh, Macs and PCs will both default to some sort of downloads folder, and if you move that or change that setting, then you have to go find out where it is that your files are, right? That's something that we can't control, or I I can't control um, when it comes to things like that. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. We're gonna use uh, some Photoshop uh, techniques because I'm gonna change these colors. So you see, you got a blue jersey here. Well, if your team color is something else, maybe it's green, maybe it's purple, red, whatever it might be. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can very easily change that. So for Illustrator users, we have to change that in Photoshop um, because Illustrator doesn't really give us the capabilities to change raster, change colors in a raster image. But Corel Draw actually does do that pretty well, so um, that is one nice feature that Corel has that Illustrator does not have. But I'm just going to open this in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how to change that uh, in this class here. So I think we'll 
we'll be good to go here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let me hide this. Uh, go to my desktop here. Reduce that. So I just downloaded those two files, and I go to my downloads folder, and look what we we have here. I have two files. Uh, one of each that we just downloaded and the reason I wanted to show you this is because a lot of people don't realize that you have to unzip these files in order for them to work now if I was to download since I'm on my Mac and if I was to download this file using Safari browser as it downloads it unzips these files and what a zip file is is nothing more than a folder right that protects the artwork or the art files that are inside of it um, because anytime you you transfer files over the internet. You have uh, you risk contamination and losing some bits and pieces and having a corrupt file. If you zip it, uh, which both program both uh, the newer versions of Mac and PCs will do it in their uh, they will zip and unzip on their regular operating system. So what I'm going to do here on my Mac, I'm just going to double click this, and you saw it unzipped it and it played. There's my folder, so I'm going to un unzip this one. And uh, here's my folder as well. So let's take a look inside of this here file. So this one happens to be my Fire Football, which is the one that we're going to use in this design. So we have an EPS file and a Corel Draw file. So if you're a Corel user, you would use that one. Uh, let's take a look here. We have an EPS file of our bear with the cut line, as you can see, I'm going around here. And we have a uh, Corel Draw file. Now I can't show you any previews in the Corel Draw files because my Mac just doesn't recognize them. So there you go. You have to unzip the files first. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to move that to the trash. So now let's go ahead and open up Illustrator. So if I go to the file menu and I open, I'm going to go to my desktop here. And I want to open the two files that we just downloaded. So let's see. There's the one. There's the EPS file that I'm going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and open that file. And there it is. So um, one thing I want to tell you is, if you're not, in, uh, if you don't use layers in Illustrator, you want to start getting them because, uh, or s start using them because they're very handy as to just visually see what's going on in your file, like very quickly take a look and see what's happening. And this is what I'm talking about. So uh, sometimes when you um, when you're working on a file, uh, we save these files as our cut files. So I'm going to turn off this eyeball down here. Right, that's my image. So this layer, if I if I just turn off the, the preview eyeball, it's going to do like this, and you can see what's happening. So you can see that we have one, two, three, four holes, open holes inside the flames, and then we have the out, outer edge of our flame. So if I turn my far, my uh, uh, image back on. You can see what we have. You can see right around the edge of the artwork here, we have the pixels that are pulled out in both directions. Right. So we're going to cut all this excess out and it's going to be weeded out and I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, right here well you know what I forgot to do this <laughs> I'm supposed to do this at the very beginning and I'm going to do that at the very end as well sorry about that I just realized it totally spaced on it but for you guys that show up at this class here and you decide to hang out and spend some time with me I'll give you your first month of subscription free so um, if you write this code down right here, this 101 SMS TVA, uh, that file, that code will zero out your shopping cart and let you sign up as a subscriber on our website. And I'm going to give you the first 30 days on me uh, for spending time with me here today. This offer does expire on October 28th, so the end of the month pretty much is um, this is gone. So I'm going to leave this up here just for a couple more seconds. All right, there we go. I'll bring it back up at, towards the end of the class. Uh, let's go back to my Illustrator file here. Okay, so when I turn off the eyeball of my of my image, I can see these bits and pieces. And if I look over here, I have one, two, three, four, five layers. So as I turn off these eyeballs, you see what's happening? We're just turning off the preview for all these little bits and pieces. Well, what I want to do, anytime you have multiple layers like this as a cut line or as a vector piece for a cut line, um, it can be problematic so if you open up a file and you see multiple lines like multiple layers like that I'm just gonna click on one you grab the interior pieces first we'll hold my shift key and click on that one hold the shift click on that this one again and now I'm gonna do the outside so I hold my shift key and click on it I've just added to my selection so this is very important when it comes to print cut 
and even uh, regular vinyl cutting artwork, I'm going to go to the object menu and I'm going to come down to compound path. I'm going to make a compound path. And now look at my layers here. Now there's just one. So all these pieces, all these, this cut line basically is set up to go to that one layer. And when I turn on my preview, you can see that it, it's, it's sitting there ready to work for us. One other thing I wanted to show you is the swatches palette. So when, we, when you download an artwork from us, what we do is we get rid of all the excess colors that are not used. And we put in here just the colors that are normally uh, used or standard stuff. So um, you see, if I mouse over that color, you see it says cut contour, upper and lower case, created as one word. The reason we do it that way is because that's the, the way that a Roland VersaCam or VersaWorks software is looking for it, right? So we assign the cut line to that name because that's the naming scheme that it requires. But if you notice, there is no other images in here. So what I want to do, I mean uh, colors. So what I want to do is I want to make a design here. And when I add my text and stuff, I'm going to have to have colors to work with. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I mean, you can do it any way you want. But if I, if I come over here and I double click on my foreground color, I'll get a color picker popping up. So um, I can make a blue. Let's just go ahead with the blue because I want blue type in there first. So, and if I hit OK, I just made the blue that I wanted. So now if I grab and click and drag this uh, little square over here on my swatches and let it go, I've just added it to this thing. So um, I'm going to double click it again. I need a white to work with because we got rid of all the colors that were not used, right? I'm going to come in here, double click the foreground color. I'm just going to grab a black. And I'm just clicking in here and dragging all the way to the corner so I know I got a good black. And there it is. If you need a specific black for your printer and your profiles, then go ahead and make that color using your RGB values, HSB or CMYK, whatever it is that your printer or your RIP, you know, RIP software requires, right? Now, uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on my uh, eyedropper tool because I want a gold in the image, but I want the same type of gold that's in my image. So I'm going to click on my eyedropper tool, mouse over here, and, and select a gold from the image. Now I'm going to click over here and I'm going to drag this guy over. So now I have all the colors I really want to work with. Uh, so I'm going to reduce my image and preview it full size here. So now if I, um, if I go to the view menu and show you my rulers, right? you can see that we have about 11 inches by 11 inches, which is fairly decent size for this particular type of printing. You don't want to go too big because you don't want this uh, image itself to have a very heavy hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my, uh, my, my uh, artboard. So if I, you see this little icon over here, it says artboard tool. If I click on it, then everything gets selected. And if you notice up here, I can make a change. So right now we're almost at 11 inches high. I'm going to go to 14 inches high and I'm going to hit my enter key. And then now I'm going to view, preview my screen and now you can see what we've done. I just added more room. So I'm just going to drag select this entire image and I'm going to push it all the way up, right? And all I'm doing here is I'm adding room to put my type because I want to put all my type at the bottom of my screen. Uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure that we're everything is running. There we go. All right, got no questions yet. Good. I just wanted to make sure and verify, because I get I get in a zone and I start teaching and I'm having so much fun I forget what's going on here. So, all right. All right so I'm gonna grab my type tool and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna uh, click in here and I'm gonna type in a school name that I want to work with. Let's say I'm gonna put my caps on and I'm gonna name it uh, Jackson and I want high on a second row, right? So here it is. If I click on the corner here, I can drag it and skew it or hold my shift key and I can just constrain the proportions and enlarge it. But that is definitely not a good font here. So a couple things I'm going to do. With my type selected, uh, it's very similar in Illustrator as to Photoshop. So when I have a tool selected, what I can choose to do across this options bar at the top, this options bar at the top will allow me to change things that whatever I'm either with the tool I'm working on or with my selected area. So I'm going to change this font. So I'm going to click in here while it's selected. And I'm going to go to Acme because I, I love this font. I think it's nice and bold and has a pretty cool look. But I want to make sure that my high is right justified. So right now, if you look at the top of my screen, I have it aligned it left. I can align it center if I want or I can align it to the right. So I'm going to go with the right here. I think that's the look I'm looking for. And a couple things. If I wanted to get really picky, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit more. Um, you see, you see the spacing in between this O and this N. I think is too much, and I think maybe it's not 
quite enough in between this J and the A. Again, these are all illustrator lessons and tricks that I'm teaching you here, right? Because remember, our art file is ready. This is just, now what do we do with it to make it something uh, very interesting? So, uh, um, I just absolutely love those things that pop up and tell you. Uh, all right, so I'm going to grab my type tool, and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click inside in between my O and my N. And what I want to do is I want to bring up my character palette. So if I go to the top of my screen and click on that, I get this little window. Well, this little window, if you, I'm just going to mouse over it a bit. I can set the font size here. I can set the kerning, which is what we're going to do here. And I mouse over that. There's the letting. And then, you know, we can set tracking and we can horizontal scale, vertical scale, all those kinds of things to control that font. So what I want to do is I want to reduce the space in between that O and that N. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to uh, go to my kerning and I'm just going to start clicking here and you see it's moving very slowly because it's a big font. We have a 132 point uh, size uh, font and we just moved it minus 19 points. So if I do that way it looks pretty good. So let's come in here and click in between. You have to click when you mess with the kerning you have to click in between each letter. Now this is getting really picky but you know what I'm a very picky artist so when I create something I want it to look as good as it can. So I'm showing you things that I do. Right? If, you, if you think that looks fine and you don't feel like fooling with it totally up to you. So I'm going to click inside here, I'm going to click on my character palette again, and I'm going to change the kerning, but this time I'm going to go the other way. I'm just going to enlarge it, or you know, go up with it. There we go. That looks a lot better to me, it looks more even, so I'm going to click off, click off of that, uh, grab my, uh, my arrow tool, there we go. So Jackson High is right justification, that's what I'm looking for, so I'm going to select it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my outlines for this. So I'm going to go to type here, and I'm going to create outlines. So now we have an artwork instead of letters. But I want you to, to take a look at this. Look at my layers here. So if I turn off this eyeball, there's my font, my uh, type of themselves. So see this little twirl down um, individual bits and pieces for that layer? So every single letter is its own layer. Well, this can become a real pain once we start adding strokes and outline colors and that sort of thing. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, select this guy, right, like this. And I'm going to go to Object Menu, come down to Compound Path, and I'm going to make it a Compound Path. And when I do that, if you notice, I go down to one Compound Path here. So all those letters are now one unit on my um, in my artwork here. So I don't have to worry about um, having, if I make a change, then I have to, it changes to this layer, and then this layer, and then this layer. Right now it's going to affect the entire piece. All right, so let's, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and grab this, and let's go ahead and, and fill it with blue. I want that color to be uh, my main color, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the uh, the words here a little better. And I'm going to view it as an outline right now just to show you what I'm doing exactly. So inside of Illustrator here, I have my type selected. And I want to add this line right here. Don't worry about it. That's just your image up at the top, you know, the binding box basically. So um, it doesn't print or anything. And then this is my my artboard, my document. So what I want to do is I want to add a white outline around this. So if I go to my um, my object menu and I come down to path, and you see where it says offset path, I'm going to click on that and I'll get this window. So right now I'm in inches mode. So if I come in here and I type in 0 0.05 inches right, and hit enter, I've just added a small outline there. right? So uh, right now, it is filled with blue as well. So if I go to preview it at this point, it just looks like a big giant blue blob. So what I could do is I could click on that one and I could fill it with white. And then now you can see, since we do that, um, it's behind. It's going to place it right behind it and expand it and do whatever we need to do. So I have my blue and then my white. So I'm going to do the same thing because I want a yellow outline behind that. So if I go to my uh, my object here, come down back down to path, and I offset my path again. Now I'm going to type in a 0.1 and I'm going to hit enter. Whoops. I got to click off of it. Let me go back to my outline. I can see what I'm doing better. So click on that. Go to object. Come down to path and offset my path. There we go. So you have to, I had it selected and I kept it selected, which I shouldn't have. I have to click off of it and then now select it again. So now that, that's um, kind of what I want to do, but I'm going to click on it one more time. I'm going to fill this one with yellow. And then now watch when I go to my view, preview, now I have a, a, uh, a blue, a white, and a gold. 
Well, I'm kind of liking this, but I'm kind of not. So I think this thing, if I click on my blue uh, face here, what I want to do is I want to add a stroke to that guy. So if I come in here and I click on it, I can s select the black color that I made. And if I come over here, I can make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go to, it's too thin, I think, because if you notice, you barely see it on the edges here. So I'm going to go up one and make it a two point. And I'm going to click off of it. Now that looks pretty cool. Uh, but um, if you notice, we came in and cut into my white outline. So if I select my type here uh, and I go to my stroke uh, palette by clicking on this little link, it brings these options up, right? So right now it says align stroke. So if I mouse over that, I can align the stroke to the center of my line or to the inside of my line, or to the outside of my line. So watch what happens when I click this middle one. I'm aligning my stroke to the inside. And when I do that, it puts the black outline on the inside of my letter. So now I have my blue face, a little, little black outline, I have a white space, and then I have my, um, my yellow that, I'm, uh, that I want to work with, right? So let's continue on. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, because I think I want to, I'm a, I like to do this just every now and again. I'll go back and forth because I can see what I'm doing. So if you notice, um, I'm going to come in here and just sort of guesstimate, click and drag. I want to put a horizontal bar here, right? And if I click on that, let me zoom in. I'm going to kind of line it up with the top here. And it's not letting me. So if you see what it's doing, it's moving in chunks. It's not moving very fluidly. Let me see what I got here. So if I go to view, see it says snap to grid. I'm going to turn it off. And then now when I click off of it and select it, now it's moving super smooth, so I can actually line it up, no problem, right where I want it. You know, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's maybe I want to move it, stretch it out a little bit more. There we go. So now I want to do two of those. Um, if I click on it here and select it, hold my shift key and roll it down. Now if I hit my option or the alt key on a PC, it's going to duplicate it. And I want to make these guys, if I go to my preview here, view, preview, again, go back and forth. I set up blue, I want to have them yellow. So I'm going to fill them here with yellow. I don't want to put a stroke on them just yet, but I will in a minute. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to set, I'm going to show you the whole thing. So we have Jackson High, we have two bars, and I want to put the word Tigers in here since that's what we're dealing with here, Jackson High Tigers. So I take the type tool, and i got to be careful. If I click in here, uh, sometimes it will automatically go onto this, but it won't now because I selected and I made them created outlines already. So that's a good thing. So, but if it was live type, it would just start blinking my cursor right in here, and it's going to want to add the word tigers into the front of the word high. You don't want to do that. So, but since I made them uh, outlines already, we're in good shape. All right, let's zoom in. I want to see what I'm dealing with here. So I'm going to click. And uh, let's just go ahead and do this, kind of moving in place. I want to change the font, though, cause, just because I'm picky and I want to use two different fonts. So um, let's find a let's see, Franklin Gothic here. And that looks cool. Something different, still bold, still easy to cut, no serifs, that sort of thing. Uh, just kind of center it. If I hit my up arrow, I can nudge it a little bit in between those bars that looks pretty good and now if I mouse out that's my uh, that's my entire image that we're gonna work with right we're not done but that's what we're working with anyway so so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drag select all this text and all my all my stuff here well when I did that if you notice you can see that there's something going on here I selected my image as well I don't want to do that so I'm gonna hold my shift key and click on my image you see it's gone now all I have is my text right here that's ready to go uh, so I can come over here, I want to shear it, right? So if I click on this tool here, there's a scale tool, and if you've never fooled with it before, this is what your toolbox might look like. So if you click and hold, it's going to give you the shear tool underneath, and I just want to go there because I'm just going to push it up. I'm just going to kind of skew it a little bit, give it give it some kind of interest, right? Some, some sort of design that looks pretty cool. All right, so before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and view my outlines again. And there's a couple things, because remember, we're print cutting this, so I want to make sure that I make this thing cut as easily and as smoothly as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this type, and I'm going to convert that to outlines, create outlines, because it can't be text. It has to be artwork. So I'm looking at things that I want to, that I think may be problematic. So if I go back to my preview and I look at it in color, when, right now when we're going to add a cut line around here, it's going to come around the artwork, and it's going to come in, and it's going to want to cut this little piece out, 
and this little, you know, this little piece here, and this little tick mark, right? It kind of see this little piece kind of comes down and goes up. These are really small elements that I don't really want my printer trying to cut, and it's just it's just going to be a a headache. You know, if I got a slightly dull blade, things like that, it's not going to be able to make that transition or that cut very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and preview as an outline mode, right, like this, and I'm going to grab my white arrow here, and I'm going to zoom in uh, a little bit more. And I'm going to select this piece right here, and I'm just going to hit delete, and then I'm going to hit delete again, and it's going to get rid of that whole entire piece, right? So we're not going to come in and try to attempt to cut that uh, when we get there. And I can do the same thing here. If I, I don't think that little piece is necessary and we can do the same thing in here uh, if we want it's just going to go to yellow now right here this is that little guy that I wanted to get rid of so if I select this right I don't want I can't hit delete it's going to delete the whole line so what I want to do is come in here and if, if your pen tool should look like this until you do something right so if you click and hold you can add an anchor point I can delete an anchor point this little minus sign here on, the, on my pen tool that's the one I want so now if I mouse over this and click over right over that point I deleted that little one I'm gonna come back up here and grab my white arrow and see this is just I mean very very picky but I'm just gonna line up this uh, this edge with the direction of my K because that's what it's supposed to be following so there is uh, you know we're ready to go now so I'm gonna zoom back out and take one more look I'm gonna preview it in full color all right I think that looks pretty good so now what we need to do is we need to create our cut lines here so what I want to do is I want to use this outline area because I want it to print this uh, blue, black, leave the white on the material, print the yellow, and I want it to cut right here. But what I want to do is I want to add a bleed to the outline of this type. I want to make sure that the outlines of the type uh, have a bleed as well. So again, when, all, when this part prints with the image up here, that bleed gets cut out and gets thrown away. Uh, and then there's just yellow, there's no white slivers, there's no white outlines around my type, you know, right? That kind of thing. So if I select this guy, this is the outline here. I'm going to take me a couple of times here. So I'm going to select it. Now if I go to Edit Menu and I come down to Copy, right? And now if I go to Edit and I paste it in place, it's going to put it right on top itself, right? So right here is what we're dealing with. Well, remember I just duplicated the outline edge, and that outline one, it was filled with yellow. Uh, we don't want to print this, obviously, so what I'm going to do here, because this is going to be my cut line, right? I'm going to click on this drop-down menu, I mean the, the, the fill here, and I'm going to fill it with none, and that's the one with the little uh, red line in it. So we don't have any fill on it. Now I'm going to come over here to my stroke, and this is the one I want to stroke it with my cut contour color, because that is going to become my outline, right? So uh, I just selected it with that color, I mean, uh, you know, put the stroke on it. Now if you come over here and you look at the stroke at the top, right now it's going to stroke it at one point. Well that's not going to work. When you go to the stroke uh, for the VersaCams and for you know some of these cutter software, if I click on this drop down menu, it needs to be a .25 outline. So I'm going to do that. Now this is the Illustrator stuff too. You don't, this piece doesn't matter. You, it has to be a hairline in Corel, but this part. I'm going to go to the stroke menu and there it is at .25 and right here, it yours may since I do this all the time, yours will probably be here at the limit at 10 times. Uh, if it is, it needs to be down and changed to one time. And if you do that, then it will recognize this cut line, as you can see when I zoom in. This cut line up at the top of my image is there, and here's this one, right? So, so now what I want to do, though, is I want to do this. I want to stroke that yellow so we have the bleed. So if I click on this one at the top, Notice, remember, it's still my cut line because I just created it. Well, now if I come over here and mouse over my line and I right-click it, if I right-click, I can go ahead and select the next object below. And when I do that, look up in my field. You can see it's the yellow. Well, watch what happens. Now I can come in here and I can stroke it with yellow, right? But I'm going to do like a 12-point stroke. I'm going to do that. I'll hit Enter, and there's my bleed. So here's where it's going to print all the way out. And one more thing I want to do, uh, I'll show you on the next one. It'll print all the way out in the yellow, and it's going to come in and cut this green line. So uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to click on this one, and I'll click on this one, and I'm going to do the same thing. So what I have to do is I'm going to go to Edit, I'm going to Copy, right? And I'm going to go ahead and Paste in place. I'm going to fill that one with None, and I'm going to stroke it with my cut line here. 
make sure I change my size to 0.25, click on my stroke, make sure, always double click, check it, make sure uh, it's at one point. Um, all right, so now I'm going to select them again. And I'm going to, uh, I think I might have to do this in two times. So if I right click and go to select next object below, yeah, it doesn't know what to do. So you do them one at a time. So I click on this one. Now right click, select next object below. And I can add a stroke yellow. Make it, say, 12 like I did last time. And there it is. So do the same thing here. Select next object below. Make it yellow. Um, make it 12. And just click on this one more time. It should stay inside your document. If you quit Illustrator and come back, it will probably go back to 10. And I can do the same thing you know, for this one. So I go to edit, copy this. And then edit, uh, paste this one in place. Now I'm going to fill that with none. I stroke it with my cut contour line. Make it 0.25. Click here. Make sure I'm there. That looks good. Right? So now select it again. You can see my green outline up in the upper left. Right click. Select next object below. And I want to add a black stroke to it. And I guess I've been doing 12s from here. I can do 12s from there. So if you see, we're going to print all the way out to the edge. It's going to come in and cut that line off, and then we weed it out when we have uh, uh, killer stuff ready to go. So here's a design that we want. Um, let's just assume that we're ready to go. And what I'm going to do is if I go to File, Save As right here, I'll save as an Illustrator file, right? And I'm just going to, I can, I'm, right now I'm just going to stick it to my desktop, I guess. And we'll just do uh, a bunch of ones to show you when it shows up. Sah, see right here. This is what I wanted to show you. So in Illustrator, when we have transparency, and that's what this is, it says, hey, when spot colors are used with transparency, change them to process colors, blah, blah, blah. This can cause us an issue with where your, your, um, your outline strokes are not recognized inside of your, uh, your RIP software. So if you get this, and, that, and what this means, the transparency, where that comes from, that comes from this image. Because this particular football image is a high-res PNG file, which means it has a transparent background. Uh, and in order for Illustrator to deal with that and handle it properly, I'm going to hit continue, and I'll get this, this dialog box, right? So you see that it has transparent uh, thing it, here is checked. Now I want to show you my, uh, this button here. Always click on the custom button. And yours may be different. Mine, is, since I do mine all the time, yours will probably have this convert all strokes to outlines as defaulted, right? It's going to be checked on. You have to be sure and make sure that that is unchecked because it, what it's going to do is going to take every one of these outlines and put two lines on them, one on the inside, one on the outside. So everything is going to be an outline, and it will not be recognized as your cut line. So make sure you uncheck that, and you hit OK, and then you hit OK again. Right, and it's going to save that file format, and we now we can take this file to our Versicam. You can also do this. You can also uh, let's see, is it on the save as? Yeah, we can go to PDF, right? And I'm going to name it there's a bunch of twos just to put a different file there. I'm going to hit save, and then in this dialog box right here, you want to make sure you use this PDF X3. Um, the EPS should work for you. It should have no problems, but for some weird reason, if you do every you know, you never know, right? Computers would drive you crazy. So uh, make sure you do PDF X3 and then hit Save PDF uh, and then just hit OK and it's going to save that file. Both of those should work absolutely no problem on your on your Roland uh, VersaCam or whatever it is. So, all right. So uh, knowing that, let's see. Whoops. Our image is done now, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of, uh, there's our image. I'm going to get out of Illustrator for a minute. And we're going to go to Photoshop. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to change colors, right? Because a lot of times, and there's a lot of bad information. I'm not pointing any fingers or saying anything, but there's a lot of bad information on the Internet. You know, if it's on the Internet, it must be true. Yeah, well, uh, I hope you don't believe those kinds of things. Uh, so let's see. Because the, the things on the Internet, I guess, and the bad information is, hey, it's a raster file. You can't change colors on that. Excuse me while I take a sip of water, and you absolutely can. So I'm going to go ahead and in Photoshop, I'm going to open up this EPS. I mean, open. 
There we go. This is the file that we downloaded, that uh, the bear, the football bear guy, right? So here's our one layer. And if I click on here, you see we got this blue. Well, if your team color is something else, this is how you change it. So if I go to the image menu and I come down to adjustments, and I, whoops, adjustments, image adjustments, hue saturation, right? I can change the color of this guy really simple. Well, I just go straight to hue and start doing this and making them all psychedelic and sick looking and crazy and evil. And all. We don't want to do that. That's not how you do it. But I just wanted to show you that if you start moving things around without getting very specific to tell Photoshop where you want to be, uh, that can happen. <laughs> so when I move that hue slider, I was set to this master drop down. But watch what happens. If I click on that, I can change these individual color ranges in this image. So I'm going to come to blues because this particular image is blue uh, for the team color. We're going to make that team color something else. So now with blues selected, if I come into my hue slider and start clicking and dragging, see what we're doing? We're changing just the blue information in my file to something else. So let's just do this. Let's go ahead and say our team is green. And there you go. So we can set it to whatever green we want. If I want it richer or brighter, I can saturate it up. Um, I can take out some of this uh, lightness here to make it a little darker green, right? Whatever your team color is, you these three sliders can absolutely do anything you want uh, as far as coloring it goes. So that's it. So now if I hit OK to that, I just changed my blues to greens because that's what my team color is, right? And uh, there he is. Now, you can get really specific, and I'll have other lessons for that um, in other, you know, other areas on my video, on my website uh, in the future. But if we wanted to select, you know, if we notice his eyes turn green, his nose turn green, his pants, and that sort of thing, if we want to get real specific with it and just do his shirt, there's a little tool here. It's called Quick Selection Tool. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag select inside of his shirt, and it selects it. Right? I'm going to grab this piece here. But now look at it. We got this uh, football part done. So if I hold my option, if you notice, the uh, the cursor has a plus sign in it. Well, if I hold my option key, go say minus sign. See that? All that's going to do is it's going to deselect or subtract from my selection. So now it's just his shirt that's selected. Um, I got some of the. If you notice, really close up there, um, you can see some of this dark brown around the outside has been selected. I think we don't have to worry about it. But just to show you. If I hit my left bracket key, it will reduce the size of my brush. The right bracket key on my keyboard will increase the size of my brush, right? So I'm going to use the left bracket key and, and decrease the size, and I'm just going to hold my uh, Option key or the Alt key on a PC and click in here to make uh, to grab that selection or that color. And the way Photoshop works is it looks for a transitional area, right? So it finds where this brown goes to black, and it stops, and it's awesome. So uh, this is a killer, killer tool. So I, I came all the way down here and I overshot it. So now what I can do is just select this piece and then there, there you go. So now it's got that plus sign in it. So all I have to do is click and drag. I don't have to hold my shift key or anything. It's going to click and drag the, uh, the rest of this shirt. I just want to make sure I capture all those little bits and pieces. Now, again, if I wanted to be real specific, which I do because this is brown showing through, if I hold my option or the alt key, I can click inside of here. And it's going to delete, or not delete, it's going to deselect the brown color. So it won't change that to brown. So now if I zoom out, so what we did this time with the selection tool is we told Photoshop to say, hey, I want you to focus in only on his shirt this time, right? It's not going to change any of this other stuff. So just with his shirt there. Now, I'm going to show you something. A little, I'll give you a little quick trick. I don't even know where it is, honestly. Let me see if I can remember where it goes up here. Uh, uh, no. So I've been using shortcuts for so long. Uh, it's got to be under the view. Here we go. This Command H or Control H on your PC. See, it's checked on. If I go, if I do this, it goes away. But it's still selected. Um, if I hit, and I, what I do is I use Command H on my Mac or Control H you'd be on your PC. So if you want to go to uh, to that view, just turn the extras. All this, I made a selection. This is just hiding these marching ants because it gets a little distracting. And now if I want to change just his shirt color, if I do this, if I go to image adjustments, right, come down to hue saturation. 
And now since I've selected just his shirt, I really don't need to go to blues and stuff because there's basically just blues in there. So I can go straight into my hues and just start changing it. All right, so now I can change it to the green that I'm looking for, and I can hit OK if I wanted. Now his eyes stayed blue, his nose stayed blue, everything else stays bluish gray. You know, we got blue in his spit in his mouth, that kind of thing. Uh, but we focused in just on his shirt. Uh, that's just another little Photoshop trick. So what we can do is take this guy and just go ahead and save this image, and we you know, give it a name, put it where you want to put it, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, and you know, just just save your file and bring it into Illustrator. So now you can use it with. Um, let's do this. Let's do a uh, just do a save. As a, do it as an EPS file. That's because we can't save EPS files. File. Yes, we can. What we're we gonna do here? This is a dot EPS. If I hit Command S, it saves it. Save it as a PNG. That'll work. We just change the colors. So, all right. So that's how you change colors in Photoshop. Um, then we got a couple minutes for some questions, if we have any. Let me go ahead and hide this and go here. Do we have any questions? Got no questions. So if you guys are looking for some a um, little bit more specifics, let me know, and I'll try to do it. Otherwise, we'll be heading out a couple minutes early. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm hide Illustrator. I'll show you guys this code one more time, right? So there is your code if you want to get the first 30 days on me. It does expire on October 28th of this year. So um, go ahead and, uh, and get your code. Try us out. Oh, I got a question. Ooh, last minute. Just zips in there. Let's see, how do you create the bleed on the full graphic pick? Ha ha ha! Ancient Chinese secret. Actually, it is not a secret, but I don't have enough time to show you how to do it. I will, though, have that as a lesson on our website. So keep checking back. Um, that is in the works as we speak. Uh, we add that bleed all the time to every single thing that we create. So um, I will have it available for you to see. It's just uh, not quite there. All right, let's see, next one. You create custom graphics. No, sorry, we don't. We create our stock stuff all the time. Uh, we're so busy with that, we just can't done. Yes, the bleed is done in Photoshop, um, and it is using, all right, I'm going to show you two seconds here. I ain't going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you where to go find that tool, right? So uh, let's see. I use a mixer brush tool. And you got to make sure you have clean pixels here, right? You want to load your brush, clean your brush. Make sure you use it clean. And if I click on this, this is the brush I use. And when I do, it go around the whole entire image. Whoops, I don't have my layers and stuff selected. And then pull them out that way, just so you know. So that that's how I do it. Uh, super quick, anyway. Does your embroidery files come in JEF? You know what? The embroidery files, I don't remember them all off the top of my head. But if you click on the website, let's go take a look here. Right, and we go. Uh, let's go find an embroidery file. And, you know, see, and click here. Here we go. So these details. Just click on one of those. These are all the files that we have. So JEF is right there. Uh, let's see. I miss how to unzip a file. Yes, really quick. I can do that. It's super, super. Ah, uh, I say I can do that. And of course. I can if I did this. Let's do it this way. I'm going to click on uh, my home page because I think I threw him away. So I'm going to click on this guy and just because he's one of our new pieces and he's up there. There we go. I'm going to download this one. Hit download. Here we go. Saving the zip file to my downloads folder. Now I'm going to hide Firefox here and I'll hide Photoshop now. Get rid of this for now. All right, here we go. So I downloaded it, here it is. When you download the files on a Mac or PC, automatically they should default to your downloads folder. If they don't, that means you probably moved that save to location at some point. So go figure out where you saved it to. And then um, you can right click here and I can, what can I do? I don't even know, I just double click it, let's see. 
on the PC you want to right click and, un, uh, and extract it basically is what you call it on the PC side let's see hmm okay so I can't remember I'm just gonna do this on a Mac double click and then poof there it is inside the folder there's my art files on your PC you right click the zip file and it'll say extract all and you want to use that's how you do it piece of cake uh, let's see I think that's it uh, well, we got one more is there an overall theme to the type of images you create no we create all kinds of categories Everything from biker style stuff to religious things to holidays to every sport that you can imagine probably. So we just create um, all kinds of categories. So whatever it is that you're looking for, go ahead and search it. You'll probably find some stuff there. Okay, Dana, it looks like uh, that's the final part of the questions. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, nope, other than one more shot of this here, if you can, because um, you guys will get 30, uh, 30 days on me, and that equates to 200 downloads on me just for hanging out. So I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe.